Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to talk about free stocks that I'm watching. So free stocks that I'm really interested in that I might buy at some point. And I just thought, you know what, let's change it up. Let's talk about free companies that I don't really normally talk about on the channel. So I uh, hope you appreciate some new content, I guess, or some new stocks coming to the channel and just freshen it up a little bit. So uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the free stocks that I'm watching. And number one is a stock that I've never talked about on the YouTube channel before, which is Mercado Libra. So I'm going to talk about this one very quickly. It is a e-commerce play in Latin America, but as well as e-commerce, it does have have a bit of fintech in there and is pretty much known as the Latin America Amazon. So let's talk about Mercado Libra. The ticker symbol is M E L I. And like I said, they're an e-commerce play and they are mostly based in Latin America. They were founded in uh, August of 1999. So this company has been for around for a very long time. And I'm also going to say this is probably a really important part because this always kind of affects companies' valuations is that you would think this could potentially be an ADR. It's not an ADR like in Alibaba, for example. So I guess it all, always has that little bit more respect on the share price. And uh, when I show you the run it has been on, uh, yeah, you can see it does have that bit more respect on the share price rather than an ADR because of that. So I guess that's probably a bit of a bonus. Obviously 2019 was a pretty good year, but going into 2020, boom, look at that. Um, the, the company's gone absolutely amazing in 2020. Uh, but what has happened recently in 2021 is this stock's kind of flatlined. You know, the valuation has basically given it time to catch up where the company has been growing absolutely amazing, but because we had such a crazy jump in this last year because of the CV situation, it's just kind of got to the point of view where, okay, we just let the company financials catch up, let that revenue catch up. And now that that has happened over the last 12 months, I'm looking at it now going, okay, the valuation is now getting caught up by the financials. And that's what I'm liking. I'm looking at this stock going, it's done nothing for a year. For me, I look at that and go, oh, this is now starting to get to a bit of attractive prices. Now it is currently a market cap of 80 billion, uh, which so it's a quite a big company. Um, not as big as a other company like C Limited, for example, that is somewhere roughly about the same kind of revenue and uh, growth. And also it does have a P ratio uh, of 1,026. Now, obviously the reason why it, is, it looks so high, if you just look at that, you're like, oh, what? You're not going to buy a company that has a 1,000 P. But the reason why is because they've only just come profitable. So what you'll see quite often is with these companies that just come profitable, they do have P's that look absolutely bonkers. But realistically, you know, that's what happens. At some point it is going to happen when they turn from being unprofitable to profit. So Mercado Libra, like I said, is a online marketplace, basically the Amazon of Latin America. And in fact, Amazon are trying to get into Latin America and Mercado Libra are actually destroying them. They are the number one player in Latin America and Amazon can't get close. And if you have a look here, this is some of the countries that they are in in Latin America. And you'll can see that Mercado Libra comes out on top of the ones that you would pretty much want them to. So Mexico, for example, you look at Brazil, Argentina, and you can see like Amazon here, one that you'd expect Amazon, if they have any chance of taking over another country, really, uh, in Latin America, you would think it would be Mexico, but you can see Mercado Libra is actually beating Amazon and Walmart. Colombia, you can see Ali AliExpress coming in, Alibaba here, but still getting beaten by Mercado Libra. Brazil still, I mean, look how, you know, Brazil's a massive country, so they're, they're dominating in there at the moment, uh, the likes of Chile and also Argentina. And as well as the other countries that aren't shown on here, they're pretty dominant in them as well. And the big reason why a lot of companies want to get into Latin America is because it's the fastest growing e-commerce region out there. So a lot of these e-commerce players want to get into Latin America because it's the fastest growing region you want to be in. So that's a great thing for Mercado Libra is they have the uh, the biggest, fastest growing e-commerce region. So the this region here is going to outperform, you know, the likes of EU or international, which is more established. In Latin America, it's still quite a fast growing pace at the moment for a lot of these countries. They've been a bit slower to adapt to the uh, e-commerce. So this is the one that you want to own in the, the next, the biggest developing e-commerce area, really. I've just gone into the SEC filings here for the areas, and you'll be able to see how much the actual countries make up of Mercado Libra here. Uh, I think this is their last earnings that they've just done recently, their Q3. And you can see here that uh, Argentina here, you can see Brazil is the biggest income at the moment. Uh, you've got Mexico here, and you see the other countries, which are, are a bit smaller in Latin America, but still contributing a fair bit here. So, you know, you can see they've got a really diverse income across all of these countries, with, with Brazil being the biggest income here. But you can see they're very well diverse over these countries, and you can see the growth here as well uh, over the last period. So you can see Argentina is growing a little bit slower, but Brazil is a massive growth area for them at the moment. Same with Mexico. And the other thing is the other countries here. I mean, this is nearly over 
of 2 x as well. So you can see there's plenty of growth with these countries at the moment. And the big thing here is their breakdown of revenue. So they have, if you look here, this is how much revenue comes from their e-commerce play, um, which is this website here, uh, the, basically the Amazon site. That's the breakdown there for the amount of sales that come through that. But like I said earlier, this is also a fintech company. So you can see here the fintech here, the fintech revenue is growing at a massive rate as well. So they've got e-commerce and they've got fintech. Now, the reason why Mercado Libra has been so successful against Amazon is because obviously it has a website that we've just shown that is basically the Amazon website, um, but Mercado Libra's version. But as well as that, they are improving the logistics side. The logistics side in Latin America was very poor and basically Mercado Libra have taken advantage of that and built a fulfillment center a lot quicker than the likes of Amazon. So the fulfillment center has helped them a massive amount, but as well as that, there's a slow adaption to a lot of online payment methods. So at the moment, a lot of people in Latin America are a bit slow to move to fintech, move on to the paying online. So what Mercado Libra did is they created a fintech platform for them to use. And the thing as well is that because they have created their, their mobile wallet, for people to kind of purchase things online. Now, the big thing you have here is that Mercado Libra could extend this fintech side of the business. So you think, okay, they've still got the e-commerce growth, but the fintech, they could grow this. This could really help people. You know, a lot of e-commerce isn't mainstream yet in Latin America. So you look at the fintech side of it and they have basically the PayPal and the Amazon side here, but with the PayPal side of it, you know, that could expand bigger than the e-commerce side of it. Because with fintech, what they could do is then, Obviously, they use that on other, you know, payment methods of maybe day-to-day -day life of going out and paying for things or services or potentially banks or loans. So this fintech here, in my opinion, it has even potentially bigger legs than the e-commerce side of it in the next few years, which is something to watch. So you are getting two kind of decent income streams in here. You're not just getting an e-commerce company, you're getting a fintech company. And like I said, that's really what has helped it really be Amazon. It has the fulfillment center built up. It has the fintech side of it built up to help people go on and buy things from Mercado Libra. And that's why it's dominated um, a lot of the competitive areas right there now the other thing is the valuation side of it i mean it has dropped down to a 12 price sales ratio it doesn't tend to go lower than a 10 previously 10 is the lowest it normally goes so that's why i'm kind of interested in it you know it's gone up from a 25 down to a 12 do not really go much lower than that point of view so uh, something to consider there and also when i compare it to like a, a c limited for example it isn't too bad of a value compared to something like a, a C limited realist. And if you look at the value, the growth here, you can see that there is steady growth here. Well, I say steady, but fantastic growth. Um, and uh, you look here, the only little thing that I'm considering now is that if we are going to have a bit of a slowdown, um, if we have a little bit of a slowdown, analysts are still expecting quite decent growth really from them. Um, but just a slowdown, will that mean it you know, will the valuation still be the same and everything like that? But what you are going to see here now is this coming. Look at the gro the projected profit growth here. The growth on the profit is going to be insane. Uh, and the revenue growth as well is fantastic. And uh, very quickly, you got two years time if they potentially put that amount of profit in or that revenue in. You know, it doesn't look too bad at all, really. And what's worth saying as well is that it's actually down in 4% in pre-market recording this video. I think they've just actually done a bit of a share offering. So obviously the dilution, everyone's a bit unhappy with that. So, uh, you know, it's moved down 4% on that news. And uh, yeah, it's definitely one that I am just keeping an eye on at the moment. So number one is Mercado Libra. Like I said, it's something that I'm really keeping an eye on at the moment. I think the fintech and the e-commerce side of it does really interest me there. And in Latin America, where there's a lot of growth still to be had. Um, number two. Celsius. So this is one that's been on my watch list for a while and it has had a bit of a recent dip at the moment and it has caught my eye. So Celsius, once again, is a company that's only just come profitable. So the P looks like, whoa, 673 P, but it's only because it's, it's just come profitable. It's currently a 5 billion market cap company. So this is quite a small market cap company compared to what we were just comparing to. And it's currently $77. It was down 6% yesterday. It's just started to move up in pre-market. But what caught my eye really is that this company historically, it does have a lot of dives in the share price. So it goes on a dive, you know, you, you, you know, 38% there, has a bit of run up, you know, another big drop off, run up. Um, it, it has historically had a lot of drop offs very quickly, but then it tends to go on a bit of a run up. So I'm looking at this on a bit of a drop off here and thinking, is it time to commit and buy it? The reason why it seems to drop off so much is just because it is expensive. 
it is there's no way of putting this it is an expensive stock um, and because of that when you are priced at perfection just a little negative bit of news and boom the share price can lose a lot of value so you look here $108 and we 28% you know we lose 28% in 10 days and there's no really negative news out there for Celsius it's just that it's priced at perfection the only thing that's happened is they came out of earnings earnings which we'll show um, right now uh, were, were pretty strong really in fact they were, they were great and um, they, they grew 157 percent the beat on revenue uh, and the beat by a, a really big amount as well you know they did 94 million and the beat by 19 million that's pretty impressive uh, the only thing they missed on was uh, EPS you know the mist of uh, EPS just just slightly which isn't bad for a growth company really and you can you think oh what I'll show you in a second, Celsius actually do like physical products uh, and because of the logistic problems, you think, okay, that's not too bad. When you look at the likes of other companies that sell physical products and the hit that they've had, that's actually not too bad. But you know, you just have a little EPS miss and you price to perfection like this, boom, you fall off a cliff and like that. But I'm looking at going, okay, it's a bit of an overreaction here. We have had the 28% drop. When it normally goes down on these sort of drops, it doesn't last too long. Is it one of those opportunities to maybe just buy a little bit? So that's what I'm considering. So if you don't know what Celsius is, they are a drinks company and they are basically energy drinks, but a little bit different from the likes of a Red Bull or a Monster. It's trying to give you a better taste really, but still give you that kind of energy kick. And they're trying to focus a lot more on fitness and you know having the Celsius maybe before you go and go work out or something. But as well as that, they are creeping a bit much like a Red Bull or Mon Monster really is that they are kind of designed for like, oh, you're going out, you know, fitness, have a Celsius before you go work out. But they do creep into that kind of like day-to-day -day life where you're like, oh, I'm a little bit tired today. I'm going to the shop. I'm going to go get a Red Bull. Celsius is also has that ability as well. So yeah, it's a little bit of a competitor to like a Red Bull or a Monster, but they are being a little bit different rather than having that kind of fizzy taste, being a, feel a little bit more healthier really, uh, and a bit more of a different taste, a bit more of a more fruity taste as well. And it's just a little bit of a disruptor in that kind of energy market. Now, like I said, these, this company has been putting in fantastic earnings recently, triple digit growth, which is great. And it's not too bad on the profitability side at all. And the recent earnings were actually pretty t good as well. Uh, like I said, you know, and it, dro and it drops off these earnings. What they've recently done is they've released some bars and these bars are doing very well uh, as well. Um, so you can see here that the CEO, John Field, they basically said that in during the Q3 conference call, said selling of fast bars is going extremely well and actually increased 50% in the third quarter from the prior Q2 run rate. So that is a massive jump, you know, three months period for another income stream expanding just past your drinks to these bars. And uh, th that's, that's growing at a massive rate as well. That's probably what the surprise in earnings was to be fair is because of the success of this new income stream that's coming in. And also like, like I said, is that it had strong gains in the supply chains, you know, so many supply chains, Corsair, for example, supply chains that are being hit and this company is still doing very well to meet the demand. And the great thing about this company now is that it is on the lines of competing with the likes of a monster with the likes of Red Bull. And it actually, if you look here that they recently, earlier this year on Amazon overtook their competitor Red Bull on market share on Amazon and now sits second behind Monster. And we know how good Monster's been over the last kind of uh, 10 years really, one of the most successful stocks from 2010. One of those companies that kind of got one of those cult followings and it just exploded. And Celsius is looking something very similar. It's getting that kind of cult following. You're seeing it on social media a lot, them influencers as well that are pushing it quite a bit. And once again, you know, you can see how successful Monster's been. And this is now number two to Monster. And Monster is a $50 billion company. We look at Celsius. Celsius is a $5 billion company. What are the chances in the next 10 years Celsius comes from being a 5 billion company and goes to a Monster, performs like a Monster Energy stock, comes a $50 billion company, we'll see. And on the growth here, you can see the growth that has uh, has done really well. Uh, you can see that they don't even lose that much money historically as well. And the thing is that growth is really starting to ramp up now. And just look at this, the projection for the next 12 months, 300 million, boom, 472 million, 28 million profit. The profit's gonna jump a huge amount. Revenue's gonna jump a huge amount. Same again. And the big thing in here is that it is a valuation, but when you look at this and the growth it's putting in, it can catch up that valuation really quick as well. 
And another great thing, it's got a pretty strong balance sheet here, not much debt on the balance sheet, um, probably could do with a little bit more cash, um, so I would potentially see that they could raise a little bit more money down the line, we'll see because they are profitable now, but when you're a, about a 5 billion company and you've got 601 million on the ba balance sheet, you probably want to get at least above 200 million, so I could see that happening and then if that happens, like I said, we could see one of those crazy drops. Uh, where it just falls off because of it. So, you know, that, that's always a risk that I am kind of weighing up, but you can see here the growth it has, what you look at previous companies like Monster here, it is expanding into bars now, which are doing absolutely fantastic. And the company's kind of firing on all cylinders. Uh, and I guess the big thing that you kind of come up with this one is how much of a premium do you pay for it? You know, that's the big thing. And you look at the drop now and go, is this worth the punt? Because at the moment, if I, if I did take a punt on this one at the moment, I'm still paying up a premium for it and it's one of those that I'm just weighing up. The the potential is that if I do buy now, that if worst case scenario it goes 60, 50, I mean, I can't really see it going to the $40 range, but if it goes to the $40 range, at least then you can just average down and you'll get actually a really good position built in a company that is absolutely firing um, and has really good track history of delivering. So yeah, um, number two is Celsius, interested in this one as well. And the big thing as well with Celsius is that this is only just from US ramping, like Celsius is still not available in somewhere like the UK at the moment. So the potential for like international growth as well is huge, like they've only just started ramping up the US, so you consider that they're not even maxed out yet. You can see a quite a clear path to kind of getting onto them monster energy lines in the next 10 years. So yeah, uh, that's number two, really interested in it. But no, we'll move on to number three. And number three is Fiverr. So Fiverr, once again, is a bit of a small company. Uh, it's six billion. Um, it came onto the stock market in 2019. Didn't really do too much uh, since it came onto the stock market, but boom, CV situation happened and the uh, stock has shot up a huge amount. But what is happening now, a bit like a Mercado Libra, is that it's had a bit of a good run up and now since really um, this year, the stock has not really done anything. And because of the stock not doing anything, what it's allowing is that just that big massive jump now is let the financials catch up to the valuation. I'm looking at it now and going, okay, is this worth an opportunity at a six billion market cap. Now what they do is they offer freelance services and obviously what has happened with the last kind of few months has helped it with the CV situation but in the long term I think the whole kind of freelance industry is just going to be a massive growth area because you consider people are wanting to not have realized they don't want to travel into the offices they don't want to be stuck in a two-hour commute when they can work at home they can work when they want to when they do their they get to choose what jobs they take on, and then jobs they take on, because it's just a one-off service, they probably get a little bit more pay as well. And from a, a company's point of view, instead of going, okay, we have to have this person in our company five days a week, realistically, they're probably only doing like four days work, three days work or something. Rather than employing them full time, what we can do is just get someone when we need them. So as a company's point of view, if they go, oh, we only really need them for three days, but we're paying them for five days, why don't we go on Fiverr? get this person to do three days work for us and then we don't have to pay in full time. So from a company's point of view, it is good because they don't have to potentially get someone in full time um, that they would have had to do previously. And from a worker's point of view, once again, you know, work at home, Just you get to choose when you're working, what jobs you take on. And I think that even though this is short term, it's having a bit of a, a bit of a tough time now as CV kind of gets back to normality. In the long term, I think that's only sped up what's going to happen and will continue to grow going forward. And the big thing here is it was a 52 highs of 336, now $183. And I have looked at Fiverr and Upwork and Fiverr is actually the one that I've used and the one that I've used, I've, I've actually had a really good experience with it. So it's a company that I actually use and I think it's actually a very good company. And even though I said it had really hard comparisons to be, what has happened is that it's actually still putting in really good growth. So you see here, they're actually putting in 42% year over year growth with very hard comparisons. So this company is still growing at a really good rate after hard comparisons to be. And as well as that, the company is uh, very good on the revenue growth, but also the cost of revenue, the margins that they have on here is fantastic. So you can see here they did uh, 74 million but the cost of revenue was 12 million, so they have gross profit of 61 million, which is massive amounts. Um, they are still losing money just a little bit, uh, but when you consider that what they are doing, so you've got research and developments, a big amount, you've got sales and marketing here, general and admin, you can see is a huge amount, so they are still losing a bit of money, but you can see here, if, if they wanted to cut back on their research and development, which 
um, has doubled, you're already nearly talking getting into profitability uh, then, or if your sales and marketing, if you cut your sales and marketing back, this company has the path to prof profitability. It's a very profitable business model, but they're just kind of being aggressive on the expansion and revenue at the moment. But what they have going on is pretty impressive. And with it being a six billion market cap, it's just a question of how much you pay up for it. Because in theory, you, you know, it's 6.7 billion, but it only doing 200, 300 million in revenue, really. Uh, same for next year, 371 million in revenue. You know, it's one of those, that it's still very rich on the valuation side of it. That's the only thing, you know, it's a great company, but the valuation is just still a lot richer than I would say in Mercado Libra or potentially Celsius. And um, that's the only thing, but you can see that this is, the leader in the gig, the freelance economy, which I think is is massively going to grow in the next ten years. So once again, it just kind of comes down to it's a great company. It's just how much you pay up for that great company, I guess. So number three is Fiverr, and yeah, like I said, I think that it's clear market leader, massive growing space. The only little difference I have between maybe Fiverr compared to Mercado Libra and Celsius is how much you pay up for that valuation. These, you know, without doubt, you are paying. I would argue probably the biggest valuation on this one, even though it's um, a great company. So yeah, that's the only thing on Fiverr. Um, so yeah, all three interest me. There's one on this list, uh, you might have been able to tell. There's one on this list that I am very, uh, right now considering buying maybe. So um, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see um, what, I, what I do here. But yeah, all three are interesting, uh, especially uh, one in particular, um, so yeah, like I said, three stocks that I'm watching. I'd like to know you guys and your thoughts in the comment section on these three, if there's one in particular you like uh, as well. And I uh, hope the video was useful. If you could hit the like button, uh, if you could subscribe, that's amazing. It, it does take me a bit longer to kind of put these videos together because there's a lot of research in here. It's probably like an eight hour video really. So uh, if you could just hit the like button, that'd be absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed three new stocks coming to you guys. And uh, I'll see you on the next video, which will probably be Tattooed Chef related because they are reporting earnings tonight. So uh, I'll see you then.